Welcome to another edition of Here's the Pitch. I am your YouTube friend, Brad. Thank you for joining me again. And this is sponsored, as always, by Masses Restaurants in St. Louis. There are five locations, stlmasses.com. Go there, take a look at that website. If you're f driving through St. Louis, passing through town, you can find some good Italian fare there. So I thank you for going there, and I thank my next guest in my series of former Real Worlders, and he's back on Paramount Plus November 24th, John Brennan from season two. Look at that. It's John Brennan. Oh, my goodness. How are we doing? That was excitement. That was not even fake excitement. That was actually real excitement. I was actually that excited when you popped on the first time, right? Awesome. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, thanks for doing this. And uh, so I've run through, I've had a few uh, former real worlders on. I really enjoy hearing from you guys. Um, and, you know, as I was trying to get you, you know, this has taken a few months, by the way. But as I was doing that, a lot of big news happened for you. So the first thing I think we should probably discuss, uh, we'll talk about your EP in a second, but Paramount Plus brought you guys back together from season two, Real World in L.A. Um, the season one obviously was back over COVID. You guys shot this, I think, a couple months ago. So this debuts uh, in a couple weeks if you're watching this then, if you're watching it after, of course, it's already debuted. But Tell me what was it like to get the call to go back and, and see your uh, old housemates again? And uh, um, just what was it like just in that in that environment? Well, you know, I was excited when I first got the call. It was uh, I don't know if they were sure what they wanted to do. They wanted to uh, bring us to New York and do a reunion, maybe with the first cast. I don't know what they had in mind, but uh, it ended up, you know, December. They called January. We were going to do something. And then. January, they did the first season, and they said, well, we're going to circle back to your cast in March or April. And we thought, oh, man, no, you're not. We're not going to get to do this. And then they did. Uh, actually, it was probably about June. And so August, we went and we filmed uh, two and a half weeks back in our same exact house in Los Angeles. So it was, uh, I knew that one day they would call us to do something. I just felt like they would. I didn't know it would be at year 28 and a half. I thought it would be year 25 or 30 or something, 50. But at year 28 and a half, we went back and, you know, we were in the same exact house, like the New York cast was in the same exact loft in New York. And it's very strange. It's like going to see your, your, uh, your height, your childhood home where you grew up or pull out your elementary school pictures and look in. I mean, it's very nostalgic and, oh yeah, that's my life. And, oh, I remember this, like it was yesterday, literally. And this, this feels like home. I mean, this feels normal. This was home to us for six months. And so um, it was strange that it, it didn't feel strange. That's, that's what was, you know, I just keep saying that it was, it was just so strange that it didn't feel more weird. It felt kind of normal. You, uh, I know you're not gonna give away secrets, but I, I'm fairly certain. I know Dominic didn't show up because I actually talked to Dominic and he said he wouldn't do it if asked. Uh, I don't think Aaron showed up either, but then I think we had the rest, right? Dammy, Tammy and David, I see in the previews and looks like Glenn and, so you got everybody kind of back. I mean, and you keep in touch with a few of those folks, but I'm a certain there's probably a few of them that you don't. Um, tell me a little bit yeah. about just catching up. Uh, you talk, Tell me who you talk to a little bit, because I know you and Beth S. still have conversations, I think, kind of regularly. But who who were you like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe you know Beth A. is here. Or tell me about that. It's so weird that, um, you know, we're talking about 1993 when we shot our season. So I didn't get a cell phone until 1998. We didn't have... Twitter, you know, we didn't have the internet in our house at, uh, in 1993. We didn't have all of those things. So when Facebook and social media caught on, we started following each other on that. And we talked a little bit more and we, you know, we liked each other's posts. So we stayed in touch as you do with friends on Facebook, but, um, you know, then Instagram and everything else, but, uh, it wasn't a phone call. It wasn't a, Hey, how you doing? Maybe once a year I would, you know, when texting started again, you're talking about pretext. But, uh, you know, once I got everybody's number and, and everybody had a, a cell phone and, and cell phones were digital and not analog, I stayed in touch with Irene and Beth S. Um, pretty well. Like, you know, so we, we talk every month sometimes. We talk once a year sometimes. We talk every week sometimes. And then, you know, others like Tammy, it was pretty much a text message or, how you doing? I hope you're great. Merry Christmas. I mean, it was just not quite as often and uh, not quite as intimate, but still sort of in touch, not deeply in touch and not involved in each other's lives. So um, same with Beth A and Glenn. It was real, real surface. I mean, just, hey, 
touch and base because, you know, you value those relationships. They're very unique. I mean, they're very unique relationships. Nobody has real world reality TV show relationships. So you value that and you try to stay in touch. But at the end of the day, you don't have a lot of, a lot in common. You know, you don't live in the same state as most of these people. And, and so, you know, you don't talk to them day in, day out, but it's, it's a, it's a Merry Christmas and wild time has sure flying by. And, um, it was, it was really great to be back and see everybody. And, and, you know, it's been almost 30 years. So marriages and children, and, you know, we're 50 pounds heavier. We're all 50 years old. You know, it's just strange friendships that you want to keep. I'll make a couple assumptions here. I'll assume that you saw the first reunion that they just did on Paramount Plus with the season from New York, and I'm going to assume that you probably haven't seen the final cut of your season here that they're going to show. Maybe you have, but what were the kind of the differences from maybe what you just felt they were doing? Because it seemed like the season one, they really wanted to get them to talk about some of the issues that they dealt with in 92 and how they're sort of circling back and they're kind of the same issues still and showing kind of flashbacks. What was your experience like in this uh, reunion? Well, I watched the first homecoming in New York because, you know, you're hoping that they're going to do season two next and they did. But, um, you know, we were I was hoping they would because I thought the first homecoming was brilliantly done. I just thought it was fantastic the way they mixed old, never before seen footage old footage mixed with the new and new perspectives. I mean, it was fantastic. And they even made mention, hey, when we lived here in 1992, do y'all remember what was going on in Los Angeles? It was the Rodney King, uh, you know, debacle and, and then the trial where the officers got acquitted and then the riots in Los Angeles. And so literally they were looking out their window 30 years later and saying now, now they're marching for Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and we, you know, with the same issue. That, that, that we're still sitting here in the same exact loft with the same exact people talking about again. And so I, that really hit me when I watched that and, and thought, have we made any progress? I mean, we're still talking about the same issues. So these are issues that aren't going to go away. And, um, you know, that's why I love the real world. It talks about real stuff uh, with lots of different perspectives. I mean, lots of different perspectives. And it, it, I mean, the real world is a, is a brilliant name for the show. And, um, I, you know, it, those specific issues are very sad and, 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 and troubling, but, um, the, the manner in which the show addresses topics and, and, and issues was awesome. I mean, I just, I loved it. And so I watched that on the New York and when, when we were doing ours, you know, here, there were some big topics on our, I mean, we had, we had, uh, an abortion, we had, um, alcoholism, we had, uh, Beth A came out as a lesbian. Well, she didn't come out. She was already a lesbian and just expressed to us that she was a uh, lesbian. And we had so much to deal with. I mean, we had so much to deal with in our house that were real issues. And, um, you know, I mean, you had to know we're going to talk about all of that at a homecoming. And so, uh, you know, what have you been doing now? And, and all of these crazy things, you can be certain that we will be talking about and visiting and hashing through on our homecoming. So, if you saw our season, or even if you didn't, it's going to be really uh, just a really unique, awesome thing to tune into. Yeah, I and I, I mean, season one was was fine, and I remember watching it when I was younger. But season two is when I got hooked because it was so you had so many different dynamics. You had you know Dominic, you and Tammy in an RV driving cross country, three just completely different people, and it was such a great start to the show. And they come visit your house and Dominic's spiky hair and you got Tammy and your it's just such a great, great start to what was gonna well, happen in that season. That, that whole thing sparked the whole season of the whole series of road rules. Right. And uh, you know, we actually talked about that exact thing you just alluded to on our homecoming. And it was, you know, you know, the whole John, your 18-year-old self is stereotyping these roommates. And I'm like, well, let's just be frank, okay? I'm not 18 years old and intimidated. They sent Tammy and Dominic to my door. They didn't send, you know, Beth and Irene. I mean, and oh, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, look at you. Look at you with Dominic's hair and Dominic's purple Doc Martens. And Tammy, you're wearing a leather vest and, 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 and you know, leather boots. I mean, to Owensboro, Kentucky, to my front door. I mean, that was – and then I opened the door, and I'm dressed like Garth Brooks getting ready to perform in a bright, red, you know, bright rodeo shirt and a 10-gallon George Strait hat and – 
I'm sure I was just as much a freak to them. So, yeah, we were – I always say the New York season, they didn't know what was happening. I mean, they're the pioneers, and they laid it out there. Props to them for doing something that they didn't really know what was coming. But um, they they didn't play it very safe when they cast the L.A. season. I mean, they took it to an extreme. They said, okay, that New York thing, really ha- that really worked. Let's do something even crazier with this next cast. And they did. They knew they did. I mean, that was – obvious well i was just thinking props to you because when you're 18 you were 18 on reality tv i can't imagine the shit i would have said or done and on that show at 18 years old i mean i still at the age i am now i'm <laughs> yeah i'm about 30 years older than that now and i still can't believe something so it's it had to be hard so congrats to you for for kind of keeping well, to your to yourself, I know there's things you probably didn't like, but hey, it was the real world, and it helped you kind of shape yourself into into an adulthood. Yeah, there's things that you wish you hadn't said, and there's oh my goodness, I can't stand the sound of my own voice on videotape. I mean, I probably won't watch this back. I just don't like to hear my voice. I don't like to see my face. It's like, hey, your face is fat. What happened? You know, but it's you just but you don't like you're your worst critic, so you don't like everything you said and did and. Um, yeah, I was 18, and, and that's another topic that we hashed through at the homecoming. It was just like, hey, you know, you guys sure were a lot older than me, and you should have had more sense. But for some reason, I was the voice of reason back then as an 18-year-old kid. I had to, so The thing that people don't realize is everybody in my house lived in Los Angeles. They weren't from Los Angeles, but they lived there. They had cars, jobs, friends, apartments. I moved there from Kentucky. I mean, I didn't have any of that. And I was 18. I didn't know my way around. I didn't have a car. In Los Angeles, you've got to have a car. It's not like New York where you can get around. And, and you know, they're all 23, 24, 25-year-old people. I'm like, hey, take a kid under your wing or something, you know? But uh, I did all right. It was stressful. I got to be honest with you. I didn't enjoy every part of the experience. But I realized the just the significance of it and, and what an opportunity that it was. And that's why I was so eager to go back for a homecoming. I didn't have to think about it, you know? Um, some people are a little skeptical about it and weren't sure they wanted to participate. I didn't have any of those feelings. I'm like, man, this was, this was a great experience. Um, I came off relatively well and, uh, I love to go back and update the world on what I've been doing. I'd love to go back and be on TV and have a, a small portion of this experience all over again. So, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those, no, and, and people say to me, well, I just don't want to be that reality person anymore. And I say, I mean, so what, it doesn't matter what you want. You are that person videotape lives forever on the internet so you don't want to be a reality star too bad too late like go and embrace it because that's who you are so for the paramount plus people watching saying john help us promote this we've seen the teaser there's looks like there's some good stuff gonna happen we're gonna get some more david and tammy hopefully and but uh give us a preview without giving too much away it looks like there's gonna be some fireworks and some fun for us fans to watch not at your, your well, at your expense uh, that you guys had to deal with for two and a half weeks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and I, and I can't talk about specifics, but I can definitely tell you that if you're a fan of the show, um, what, what you saw on the New York Homecoming, if you watch the New York season and then you watch the Homecoming, I mean, you were like a kid in a candy store. That was awesome. Like that was a great update. It was well done. It was a revisit. Um, it, it got contentious. Right. Right. It had all of that. And uh, that's what I would expect. Uh, just like our season took the New York season to another level. I think our homecoming is going to be like, OK, wow. Like that was a lot. That was a lot. Like, I, you know, I, fans are going to love the homecoming. I mean, they're going to love it. Um, we did have some 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 heated discussions and some uh, events. We had some events that took place. Um, and we, we had a lot of really uh, great times. I mean, they, they, they sent us on some excursions that were really fantastic. Um, we had, uh, you know, we had special people that were involved that, you know, may not have been expected to be involved and, and make appearances. Uh, we had, I mean, but you can look at our, at the press that's being done for the homecoming and you kind of know who's, you know, participated and, and, and who, you know, declined. And uh, I, I'm not really at, at liberty to, to say that, but that's, you know, you don't have to be a, a detective to figure out um, if you just look at the press pictures and, and say, hey, this is who's on there. And it, it I, I'm not going to lie, it's great. Like, I haven't seen any of the shows, but I was there. I know what's coming down the pipe. 
is it's pretty it's pretty incredible. It's pretty fantastic. Well, and by the way, the press picture. I look at a few people and I'm like, I don't who who is that? I I had yeah. to really really do some digging. I forgot. Uh, I kind of, I mean, I, I, I remember Beth A coming in and I remember Glenn coming in, but then uh, I can't really tell who's in some of the, the picture. So it's good it, that it has me. Well, I got a cowboy hat. So you recognize me right off the bat. Well, as I said, um, you haven't really changed much either. I mean, I know you made fun, but you look pretty good still. You've, you've held up. Well, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'm my worst enemy. I don't, I don't, or my worst critic. I don't like my double chin, but I didn't like it back in the nineties either. So. You know, it's the same one, and uh, my big fat face, and oh, this this has happened. Like I don't have a lot of hair. I used to have the mullet. Remember, I had the mullet. I don't have the mullet, but you know, Glenn's completely bald now. Where he used to have uh, dark hair pulled back and in a ponytail. So you know, Glenn looks a little different on the press pictures, and you know, we're all a little bit heavier, and uh, you know, we're fifty year old versions of our twenty year old selves. Well, I'm going to ask a few more questions, of course, about the, your days there and, and about the reunion. But you're uh, you're you were singing at 18. You were doing stuff in Nashville, um, and you got very excited when I kind of asked you because you said, "Listen, I got actually some great news coming out." And you have an EP that just came out just a, a little bit ago. I ain't done singing yet, and um, yeah. so let people know how we can uh, we can hear this and and what was it like? I mean, I guess you'd been trying and working towards making music and getting out there. Um, but I think this feels like the first kind of real big thing for you. Um, johnbrennan.com, right? Johnbrennan.com is where we can find it. But tell us. Johnbrennan.com, no H in John. I'm J-O-N-B-R-E-N-N-A-N.com. Uh, and that's where I prefer you get my music because I actually get to recoup a lot of the expense that I've spent making the record. Um, it's on Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, iTunes. It's on all that stuff as well. <clears throat> but um, if you really want to support me, go get it on my website, please, because it helps me more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I ain't done singing yet. What happened was right after the real world, I was cast onto the real world because I was a country music singer in 1992, 1993 country music was really, really big. They wanted a country music singer, just like when they went to San Francisco the next season, they wanted a bike messenger. They went and found Puck. They came to Nashville and find, found me and, and, uh, they realized real fast that I was a fish out of water and I would do real well on the show. I never auditioned. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to be on MTV. Ugh. You know, I'm a country music singer and come on. That, that, that thing, the show you just described sounds kind of stupid anyway. Well, I was perfect for the show because I felt that way and I said those things. And so I used all of that fame, if you will. Um, when I got back to Nashville uh, for the 90s, I was, you know, we, we were before the Kardashians and Big Brother, we were, we were, that fame. I mean, Jersey Shore. Think about it, if you saw those cast members, that's who we were in the 90s because you know, they would play those marathons all day long. So I actually got signed to Capitol Records because of that kind of exposure. And then they signed Trace Adkins and dropped me off a label. And I thought, well, I'll regroup and, and put a record out and do real well. I mean, I was opening for big, big acts. It was, you know, Alabama and then MTV's real world, John Brennan. So, I mean, I was right on the cusp of, of maybe doing well in music, but it all fell apart. And what I ended up doing was going and, and starting a church and working um, at churches and leading the music, using my musical abilities to lead worship in church. And uh, did that for the last 20 years. I was a missionary in East Africa for a long time, uh, rescuing and working with uh, orphan children. And, um, you know, found myself back here in the South working at a church and, and being a youth pastor. And uh, just one day woke up and said, man, am I done singing? Like, that was a long time ago. I haven't done that in 15, 20 years. Am I done? And I stand in the shower one day and I just said, no, you ain't done singing. Get back on the horse. And so I thought, well, what am I going to do? We'll write a song. I ain't done singing yet and record it and get back out there. So when they called me to do the Real World Reunion, I was like, this is my chance. This is the chance. The whole world's going to look at John Brennan again, just for a, a fraction of a moment in time again. And then it'll be gone like it was before. If I want the world to know what's in my heart and soul, make a record. And so I made the record. I wrote some of the songs, three of the five songs I co-wrote, recorded it. And actually on the homecoming, um, I got to talk about it. And, you know, my roommates are excited about my, my music coming out and, it's going to be, uh, you know, discussed on the homecoming, you know, what John's doing and, and, uh, you know, it's an update on everything. And so, yeah, the music coupled with the, uh, with the homecoming, this is a really busy month. My music came out today's Thursday. It came out on Tuesday. 
So, and then the homecoming airs, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, the twelfth, the 24th. So the day before Thanksgiving. So, I mean, this is a huge, huge month for me where no one's heard from me. No one's been interested. No one's been calling me. And then all of a sudden, boom, new record, boom, homecoming reality show. And so, you know, I got to be honest, as a singer and a reality star, I'm really digging this yeah. attention. <laughs> no, your, your 20 minutes of fame now is, is here. Yeah. I, I don't know if you'll what, you want to dig into what happened, but what, I mean, why did the, uh, the career not really take off? If you were opening for Alabama, I, I mean, I, I listened to a lot of country music. It sounded like you had it. You could do it. Um, what, what went yeah. wrong? There were a lot of factors. One was the people in Nashville at the record labels, they didn't understand MTV. How can we make this MTV star a country star? And what they didn't realize is he's not an MTV star. He's a country music singer that got thrown on a reality show on MTV. They couldn't put those pieces together. Like, how are we going to market an MTV singer? It's like, no, are you listening? I'm not an MTV singer. I'm from Kentucky. You found They found me in Nashville. I'm a country. They didn't get it. They just didn't get it in the 90s, and they didn't realize how many records they could have sold on me. But uh, my manager managed Winona Judd, and he got drunk one night and cussed me out, so I fired him. My record label, Capitol Records, signed Trace Adkins, and for some reason didn't feel like they could keep us both. And they said, you know, we're going to go with this guy. And my booking agent, who was Garth Brooks' booking agent, booking all my concerts and all those big opportunities I was getting, had a heart attack and died. And it just fell apart really, really fast. And I thought, that's no big deal. I'll get it all back together. And it just didn't. It just didn't. And um, I don't really know all the answers, except I think the Lord had in mind for me to do ministry for a while. And and I don't know if this record's going to blow up and I'm going to have a big career in music or not. But this is in my soul to do. It's in my soul to release. Uh, I still enjoy doing it. So that's, you know, that's the reason. If, if nothing else comes out of it, except for my fans getting to hear my music and me getting to enjoy doing it, I may never win a CMA award. I may never get to. But, but I'm not going to just sit around and say I didn't try. And I'm not going to sit around and say, hey, uh, I did used to sing and now I'm done. No, I ain't done singing. And I still got that in my, in my passion wheel. So. Well, I look forward. I haven't heard it yet, but I think I'm going to go out and purchase it. I'm a fan of yours, and I'm I'm looking forward. And the music business is just so weird. You never know. It just Very weird. you never know. So, <laughs> you know. so weird. Um, so weird and unpredictable. You could have now. They, now they, they, these guys, there's the CTs and Johnny Bananas, and they're literally now just challenge stars. You did some challenges. You were on with right CT. Didn't you work with? You worked on you were on a challenge with the Miz. I mean, you were on a couple of these challenges. You could have been, you know, one of those challenge stars. Now you got kicked off real early on both of them. Maybe people don't remember, but um, well, tell let, me. Let me tell you. You know, I find myself saying this to everyone that interviews me because they all say things similar to what you said. And I even I'm sitting there at at the homecoming with the producer, and and this particular producer actually happens to be a big producer of the challenge. And I said so. Why am I not on the, the All-Stars Challenge? And uh, she says to me, she says, well, it's an All-Star Challenge. Were you, were you ever on a challenge? And I, I was like, you know, like I'm a pretty nice guy, right? So I, I, I said, was I ever on a challenge? Let me tell you something. I was on the first challenge, okay? I was on the very first challenge with Rachel and Sean and Puck was Mr. Big and Eric Neese. I started the challenge. I started, okay, I started Road Rules, Tammy and Dominic and I did. I started The Real World, unless you count the first season, which was lame. Okay, I'm just kidding. But arguably, arguably I started The Real World, and I started the challenge. Why am I not on? I don't understand. So I was on the first challenge ever. They actually called it Road Rules All-Stars, but it was the first challenge ever in 1998. I mean, it doesn't get more OG than Eric Neese and me. I mean, before Mark Long ever heard the word road rules or challenge, I was making these shows. And then I was on Battle of the Seasons with Beth as my partner. Well, Beth was so unpopular, we both got voted off very early. Not because we performed badly. We performed fine. We were not dead last. We were in the middle of the pack, but we got voted off because at that time, Norman didn't really like Beth a lot. And so we got voted off. I got eliminated because of Beth's unpopularity. And then in Inferno 2... Um, I did. I volunteered to go into the Inferno and take the Miz's place. And you, you, know, you don't do that. I mean, why, why did you? I, and Dan Renzi eliminated me. But I always say, if I had not done that for the Miz, the Miz would not be the superstar that he is today. It was because of my sacrifice in the Inferno 2 that Miz went on to be a WWE star, 
But listen, you mentioned CT. CT was on the Inferno. He was there. Uh, nice enough guy. I like him. I mean, I really like him. But tell me why he deserves to be on a challenge every single season until he wins. No real good reason. I mean, he's, he's good TV. He's fine. Bananas. Okay, I got no use for the guy. Like, I have no value. I mean, I've met him, but I'm like, okay, fine. But why do they get cast? Darrell. I love Darrell. Tell me why they get to be on 40 seasons of the challenge until they win. I mean, it's not only not fair, it's irritating. It's like, oh, sorry, CT, you got eliminated. You were so close. Let's put you on the next five. Meanwhile, there's people like me sitting at home that started the whole thing that would like to be on the show and have the chance for the money. Let's campaign. Well, I mean, let's camp. I'm, I'm just sitting here going, okay, really? Well, well really? There, first of all, you're probably too nice. Uh, the reason those guys are on is... Let me tell you something. If I get on a challenge, John Brennan nice guy's out the window. I've seen them stab each other in the back. I can be backstabbing if it's... A, now, if I'm in the real world and, and we're sitting on a couch, I'm going to be a nice guy. We're having, you know, a friendship relationship. But if I'm on the challenge, I'm going to stab you in the back because that's obviously the name of the game. And once you get on the challenge, you get to come, you know, forever. And you get to just return until Jesus comes back. So, you know, if I ever get back on the challenge, I'll be so glad I get to be on all of them. Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? I'm a little, you, you, you hit on a very sensitive subject. <laughs> Did you get a chance to, to know these guys at all well? Because you weren't really there long, but The Miz and CT. I, long. Um, I mean, a little bit. I, I mean, I texted Darrell uh, and I'm like, hey man, you remember me? I was your roommate for about a week. And he goes, of course I remember you. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm pulling for you. You know, hope you're doing good. I mean, they're all nice people. They're all nice people. So, I mean. It's not their fault. If they get called every time, they would say yes. I would say yes. But I just don't understand why people like me haven't been considered. Beth says it's because I don't take steroids. Maybe it's time. <laughs> is she, now, is she, I know you guys are friends, but really on TV, she's very unlikable. Is, is, that, is that something, a character she has worked on, or is it something she's been blessed with all of her life? And I'm hoping to have her on here, by the way, too. And I would say that to yeah. her. So She is, uh, well, everybody that interviews her asks her that question. She's very misunderstood. She's, uh, she's a very good-hearted person, and, and she's a dear, dear friend. I love her. But she doesn't understand sometimes how, how she comes across. And so when she looks at you and says, John, why do they treat me that way? Why don't they like me? I'm like, well, you do realize that you said this to them. <laughs> she's like, well, so that was the truth. I'm like, yeah, it might have been true, but they weren't in a place to receive it. But um, Beth gets uh, taken advantage of and bullied a lot. And she doesn't just, you know, absorb it. She actually retaliates verbally and otherwise. And so uh, she, she has a rap for being very unlikable. And if all you see is what you see on TV, yeah, it's not, it's not all the time, uh, you know, real admirable, but... Uh, She's she's not she's not a bad person. She's not a she's just playing the game like everybody else. She's just playing the game. I mean, honestly, when you watch the challenges, can you think of very many people that are likable? Like you would categorize as likable? I mean, some of them are entertaining, but you don't want these people as friends. It's a very good point. I just I was trying to think in my mind, Landon. I like Landon. Seemed like a nice guy. Landon is a nice guy. <laughs> he is a nice guy. He's very funny. He's fun to be around. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the current crop, no. But they're, you know, the challenge all-stars. They, you know, they've done the real world. Now they're doing the challenge. And I know the OG is working on getting the second season, third season. I think John Brennan should be on it. I, I'm, let's, just, let's just do it. Well, at this point, it would have to be the fourth season because uh, season two is getting ready to air, maybe tonight. And uh, season three is shooting right now. So it would have to be, yeah, I, I would join that campaign. Make that a hashtag. Thank you. Um, again, not to give anything away from the Paramount Plus version of the, the Homecoming, but is there a point where we hear Tammy say, it wasn't not funny? <laughs> Let's just say the whole, the whole event that that comment was, uh, was couched around is revisited. No shit. I, I'm not shocked by that. <laughs> it's gold. It's gold, Jerry. It's the most, it was the first viral moment of reality TV. I think everybody was talking about it. It sure was. I was right there. <laughs> Let's just say it's, it's no surprise. And uh, they actually play the footage and we, you know, we, we hashed through it again on television. But um, it wasn't not funny. There are some one liners that, that stay with television and it wasn't not funny. 
is right up there with what true story and all the rest of them. But uh, I'm telling you, it wasn't not funny. We found out how wasn't not it funny again too. Oh, that's too bad. It was funny. I'm sorry. It was funny. And I think she overreacted. And if she's still holding on to it, she's wrong. She overreacted. They were having fun. David should not have been voted out. I still say that 28 years later. I didn't live with I didn't live with them though, but good. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I want you to watch our homecoming and then watch this podcast where you said that again. And A B, I want you to I want you to compare them after our homecoming airs all of the episodes. All of the episodes. Okay. And then you call me and say, hey, remember we did that podcast and I said I felt this way? I like to revisit that comment. Okay. Well, I, okay. I still find it. I, I, it was funny. <laughs> there were parts of it that was funny. Yeah, there were parts of it that was funny. But I guess maybe there's additional footage that they didn't show back in 1993. Maybe we'll see that coming up. I would say uh, there's not a whole lot of additional footage um, there is some additional factors that uh, maybe people didn't realize. Okay, well, that's okay. Because that was my only problem, if we're, if we're calling a, sp a spade a spade here. I, I didn't like all of the going back to um, all the bad things and having to rehash them out. I, I, I was hoping it would be uh, that the first reunion was going to be a little more light. I felt it was too heavy. Yeah. I think it was too heavy. So my hope is that your season was fun, was light and fun. And yet you said there was many big topics. But in the end, it was enjoyable TV, where I, the first season was sort of uh, dark and gloomy, and where you guys are out in L.A., there's palm trees, there's sun, and there is some moments that are, you know, when Tammy goes to get the abortion or, you know. But it was fun. It was a fun show. I'm hoping, for me, that the reunion this time is a little more light and fluffy. That was a little heavy, that first uh, reunion. Just my, my opinion. Well, I think you're going to get the gamut of emotions because there will be some there will be some very light um, and comical things. I mean, I'm just th thinking of some things that were said and did that are pretty hilarious. And then, uh, you know, there, there's we, we address some pretty heavy topics, too. So there's 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 a lot in the homecoming. There's, I mean, there's, because we're such different people that, that are living such different walks of life. I mean, it's. I love the project. I call it the project. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy, awesome opportunity to go be yourself, represent yourself, represent your hometown and your upbringing and, and be who you are and just say, wow, I'm completely different than that person across the room. They don't understand me a bit. As a matter of fact, I irritate them and every single thing about my core beliefs irritates them. And then knowing that you're thinking the same thing about them. <laughs> well, did, did you see, I mean, did you see the New York season before you got on Real World? So you knew what you're getting into, right? Okay. 28 years ago? Yeah. No. As a matter of fact, um, no. We had it on, they were showing reruns of it on MTV, and we were watching it in the house, and they took our TV out because they didn't want us watching it. Um, I actually, and that's what everybody, somebody said that to me on social media the other day. They said, well, you know, the New York cast is the only genuine reality show ever because they didn't know what it was. From then on, everyone knows what's going on and they're completely playing up to the cameras. And I'll say, I do feel that way nowadays with all of the reality shows that are out there because there's been, you know, 30 years of reality shows and, and lots of craziness. But our season, no, we, we still didn't know what was going on. We still didn't know how famous it was going to make us. We still didn't know how it was going to be portrayed. We, we still didn't. Know. Even my roommates that had seen the previous show, we still didn't get it. I mean, I, I, I will defend us um, and say that we were still full of integrity at that point. Well, and I had Judd from season three of the San Francisco, and I mentioned, you know, I started thinking, and I've thought this before, but it is amazing. I mean, pretty much by season two, even in season one, the template for what we see on reality TV right now, Bachelor, Kardashians, Housewives, it's the same. Get a bunch of people in a room, create a little tension, talk, have a producer kind of feed a line here and there, maybe have them put something in the table, have them talk about it. Now you get, and, and it's amazing to me that Boonham, Boonham, and, Boonham and Murray had that thought and that this template that started in 92 with the New York season, you guys brought it, and then again the next year with Puck and Pedro, and you get all these stories. It hasn't really changed that much, I, and and you guys were you guys were guinea pigs because now anybody that goes on these shows they know exactly what to do. You guys didn't, so congrats to yeah. you, I say. 
Well, I mean, I don't know if it's congratulations. It's just we were willing to go and be part of something crazy, and uh, we were up for an adventurous experiment. And, uh, you know, people made a lot of money off it. It wasn't us, but the network made a lot of money. And we were just, you know, the, the people that were on there. And so, I mean, congratulations. I, I mean, congratulate us on the homecoming because that's something that we were actually able to enjoy and, and be appreciated for and, uh, and, and really have some perspective to go back with. And, and, and uh, the, the first thing, I mean, we just, we just, I was an 18-year-old kid that didn't want to be in college. That's all that was. And the homecoming, you guys stay in the house the whole time, two and a half weeks, right? Can't, are the cameras in there for the two and a half weeks, too, or are they creating? So everything is, it's just like the old time. A little different, a little different. Um, like, they had some planned events for us, and they had certain times that we would, you know, watch old clips and talk about old topics. So it wasn't unstructured like it was 30 years ago. It was a little bit more structured, which... It's fine. You know, you're shooting a reunion. So, I mean, it's not just, you know, go where you want and say what you want. It's, hey, we're sending you here for this meal or, hey, can everybody gather? We'd like to, you know, show a, an old clip and have you guys discuss it. And it's a little more structured, which, you know, doesn't really bother the integrity of the fact that it's a reunion for a reality show. It's a it's a, you know, they have a storyline that, that they want to you know, make sure that they address all the topics that the fans want to watch and the network wants to buy. Um, but I mean, when we're just standing around making breakfast, I mean, we're just being ourselves again. So it was old hat. Last couple of minutes. So uh, Dominic, again, I mentioned, I talked to him uh, prior to all of this and he's an executive with, uh, I think Disney music. Um, do you, did you talk to him? Have you talked to him? I know I don't want you to give anything away, but do you keep in touch with Dominic at least the guy who picked you up in a, in a Winnebago? I do. Um, for a lot of years, no. But then I was in Los Angeles about four years ago, and I just called him and said, Dom, I'd love to see you, man. And he said, come over to the house. Me and my wife will make dinner. I said, okay. By the way, I'm staying at Beth's house, and she's my ride. How do you feel about seeing Beth? So Beth and I went and had dinner at his house four years ago. Did she bring cats? Did she bring her cats? No cats. She bring cats. <laughs> no. no, but... Uh, <laughs> We had such a beautiful time together. At that point, I was a missionary in Africa, and I was raising my own support. And uh, Dominic was very generous in a, in a gift that he gave me to help continue that ministry. And yeah, we just really caught up. And, uh, and you know, he, he, in retrospect, didn't love the experiment. I did. That's fine. Um, so when they called us to do a homecoming, he, he, he was like, I'd love to see you, John. But I'm not going to see you on a reality show. I said, okay, but I don't know if they're going to do the show without you. And he said, well, I really hope they do because I can tell you want to do it. Um, but I'm not going to do it. I said, okay. So I'm not going to ask you anymore about it. And so we did the homecoming and we were in Los Angeles. And I said, hey, we're done. I'm about to fly home tomorrow. Can we get dinner? And he said, is there going to be a camera crew there? I said, no. And so we, we all got to have dinner with, with Dom and Aaron. Uh, with no cameras and 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 so it was it was great. That's it was really good. I, w I did want to ask about Aaron because I no one I, we have no idea what he's up to. If you could, I would love to know what he's he, up to. He's doing really well. He's got a beautiful family, a uh, wonderful career. Uh, he doesn't have social media. He doesn't. And we took a picture that night. He said, "Please don't put this on social media." And so we didn't. You know, I got a picture with him, and and uh, he's a friend. And and you just you know, I'm all over social media. I love that. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Brennan underscore com. Go to my website, follow me, Facebook, whatever. But if you don't want that, that's fine. I'm going to respect that. And so, uh, yeah, he doesn't want the general public or viewing audience to, to, but I'll just tell for those that are watching this, that want to know he's doing awesome and his family's awesome and he's got a great life and he just don't want to be on a reality show anymore. And so, I can kind of understand that. <laughs> I get that. No, I totally do. Um, well, this has been fun. JohnBrennan.com. You have the EP out. I haven't mentioned any family for you, and you're living in Alabama, even though you're repping the Wildcats, which is great. Um, just yeah. maybe what's what's been going on with you here the last couple of years or this month or the last week, whatever. <laughs> Man, I've, I've been a mentor. Uh, been youth, um, I'm a youth pastor, and I've been mentoring young people, teenagers, um, guiding them towards the love of the Lord. I've been a missionary uh, in Uganda and Kenya. I sponsor a lot of children over there. I've been just doing my thing and enjoying life. And uh, 
you know, I got four dogs and uh, a lot of young people that I mentor and just uh, my father passed away going on three years ago. And my mom is still in Kentucky, my brother and his family, my sister living in Virginia, but just, you know, really enjoying life and this EP music that's come out and maybe a chance to do country music again. And this reunion, this homecoming on Paramount Plus of the real, the real world is uh, a really great thing that, I've, you know, we all suffered through COVID in 2020 and 2021 has been a, a more positive outlooking year for me. I'm, I'm just really excited about everything going on, doing podcasts like this and talking to people and getting back out there in the public eye is, uh, is refreshing and nice. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of known as, as the nice guy that, that, you know, wants to be your friend. And, and I like that too. So I was always shown in a pretty favorable light. I mean, I don't like everything I said and did. I don't like the way I looked on TV all the time. I didn't like, you know, my voice. But the bottom line is I came off pretty good. And when people meet me on the street, it's usually a positive experience. And uh, I, I liked it. I mean, I'm an entertainer and a, and a reality TV star. So attention is what I like. <laughs> wow. Well, it sounds like you're doing really good work. And, and um, again, your EP's out there. So really appreciate your time. I enjoyed this a lot. And it was funny. I'm tell it wasn't not funny. It was funny. I'm telling you. Uh, but I look. I, I look forward to again. I look forward to watching because I think it's. Um, I can probably say this. I think it's my favorite season of the Real World because every other one that came tried, but it didn't. It didn't click the way uh, this cast did. And it's. I really enjoy hearing about Dominic and Aaron, and I look forward to seeing. You know, Tammy was out there doing things, but I, I really do. I look forward to seeing all these people again together, and I really do appreciate you coming on here. Hey, hey, thanks for being patient because I know you wanted to do this a while ago. And I said, well, I don't have anything to talk about, but in a few months I will. So thanks for uh, holding off and being persistent. And and please, now when our homecoming airs, I want you to get a hold of me and say, okay, okay, all right. Now I see some extra layers I didn't know. And tell me if you feel any different. I'm sure that, I'm sure I'll be proven wrong, but I will. We'll, and, and let's get John on the All-Stars Challenge All-Stars Season 3. Let's go. Come on, Mark Long. I think Mark Long's going to be on here soon as I continue. Mark Long's actually been trying. To, he's been trying. I have to give him props. He's a good dude, and he's been trying to get me on there. So when you have him on your podcast, tell him John Brennan say what's up. We will. We will. So thank you, John. Thank you for watching. Again, it's sponsored by Masses Restaurant St. Louis. Five locations. STLMasses.com is their website. Check them out if you're driving through St. Louis, uh, coming up through Alabama, passing through John Brennan country, and uh, we'll see you next time.